Welcome to the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, and we'll be discussing financial literacy and how we can become an economically sustaining community. What is the Urban Wall Street? The Urban Wall Street is, how should I say, an offspring, if you will, the rebirth of the Black Wall Street. The Black Wall Street, many of us are not familiar with the Black Wall Street. <clears throat> the history behind the Black Wall Street, in 1921, it was the most prolific African-American community uh, almost to date. It was consisting of African-Americans, blacks, Jews, Native Americans, and whites, all working interdependently. This was an area where over 15,000 individuals in a 36 square block uh, community living and residing. Um, why was this such a prolific era? Why was this so important? Those are some of the things we're going to talk about. The Urban Wall Street Project is here geared to start enlightening the community about becoming financially stable, meaning financial literacy. How do we do that? Are we ready to do that? It's very important, as we are here now in the year of 2006, our communities, the faces of our communities, I reflect the spending that we make. $0.2 trillion a year is the expenditures of America. Your communities don't reflect that type of spending. That's an issue that we need to correct. And hopefully with the Urban Wall Street Project, we'll begin the process of creating economic infrastructures that will create long-term, self-sustaining communities for generations to come. So as I talked about the Black Wall Street, in the early 1900s, over 15,000 residents in a 36 square block area, all successful because of Jim Crow laws and segregation, they had to be independent and interdependent. A lot of times individuals strive for independence. I got to get mine. I have to have mine. I need wealth. I'm independent. I work. I take care of myself. But the reality is an independent person who thinks and operates solely as an independent person will rarely achieve the level of success they want because it takes a team to win a championship. You can be the greatest individual by yourself, but the greatest individual alone up against five of the worst will always lose, especially if it's in business. It's extremely important to know this. Interdependency. What is interdependency? Interdependency is working together for the greater cause of the community. A quote by uh, Mr. Carter G. Woodson said, cooperation is the most essential element in the development of a people. What does that mean? That means if in our communities we see things that we don't like, dilapidated buildings, poor schools, poor health care, um, overpricing, all of our money is going out. We have to begin the process of recognizing what is important for us. What will it take for us to become the self-sustaining community we want? What will it take for us to have what we see on TV and we aspire to? $1.2 trillion a year. As you're watching the show, I want you to think about that. You look around, you look out your window, and the next time you go outside, $1.2 trillion is what we spend annually. Where is the money? That's what we're going to talk about. The Urban Wall Street Project. The Urban Wall Street Project is a creation of mine born from the Black Wall Street era. Thinking about almost 100 years ago, this successful community doing it through cooperation, through interdependency, because they had to rely on one another to sustain. If we were able to do it a hundred years with some of the ordeals and tribulations that had to be overcome just to feel human, I'm sure a hundred years later we can do it. And if we can't, we definitely have to look in the mirror and wonder, are we going to make it? Are we prepared to make it? The Urban Wall Street Project is able to generate revenue based on redirecting our money we're spending. So you say redirecting money. What does that mean? Well, let's think about this. For everyone in the Bronx, there's 1.8, excuse me, 1.5 million documented residents. Now, I'll take a simple utility that we all use, rich or poor, employed or unemployed, the telephone business. The telecom industry is one of the biggest industries in the world, over $200 billion annually. And if you're staying abreast, you know that Telecommunications is changing because we're now going to VOIP, which is Voice Over Internet Protocol, Broadband Internet Service, 
using the internet for your telecommunications. So it's very important that as we start to recognize how can we maximize our dollar, that we know the areas that we need to be involved in in order to get that maximum, okay? So use this example. 1.5 million documented residents in the Bronx. And I would easily say 500,000, one third of that population has a home telephone. Well, if those individuals pay $50, and that's marginal, minimal for a bill. We all probably pay more than that. But just imagine $50 every 30 days from 500,000 people. That's $25 million every month leaving our community. Think about that. A lot of individuals think the Bronx is poor, low income. Low income, poor, any community where one third of one expense generates $25 million monthly for corporations, that's not a poor community. The goal is how can we maximize that? We're spending money on clothing, we spend money on jewelry, oil, a lot of depreciable goods that don't generate any revenue for us. A lot of times we complain about the lack of resources in our community, the lack of money in our community, the lack of funding in our community. Well, we have to start to recognize, do we actually lack the funds that our community needs to uh, be representative of what we want? At $25 million a month from one service, I think not. So the Urban Wall Street Project is, a, is the birth of a new generation. It's a generation of thinkers. It's a generation of doers. It's a generation of innovators because we're all spending the money, we're wasting money, and we're not seeing our money work for us. Financial literacy. What is financial literacy? That's the goal that every person watching this television show and around the country should be aiming towards. Financial literacy is being literate in the area of finances. We all strive daily to have financial stability. If we have a nine to five, we say, I have a job, I'm stable. Well, the reality is your job is only given to you or only ready because someone needs you. If a person's business changes or their concept about their business direction changes and your service is no longer needed, then that security that you thought you had is no longer there. So it's not necessarily secure. Concepts, job security, social security. Are we secured by society? Do you feel secure in your job when you go? Do you feel secure enough to take off a week and know that your job is going to be there? Probably not. If you took off a week, you might not even be able to sustain your general monthly household. So these are the things that I'm going to talk about. But with financial literacy, the first step is knowing the nature of your money. Now some folks might ask, what's the nature of money? I don't understand what that means. In America, there's three ways you make money. Linearly, residually, and passively. That's it. Those are the three ways you make money. Linear income, it's not a wealth principle. Many people go to work every day, work hard, work two jobs. Some work three jobs, trying to get financially stable, trying to get that level of independence. But if all your money is linear, it's not going to happen. Because what is linear income? Work an hour, get paid for an hour. You want to make more money, work more hours. It's not a wealth principle. Residual income. Residual income, now you start scratching the surface of long-term revenue. Think of it as royalties, as in a TV show or music career. You do something once, you get paid over and over. For example, a bank sells a home or a banker sells a home. They sell a home one time. You pay a mortgage every month for 30 years. That's residual income. Someone did a job once, revenue is being generated every 30 days. That's a revenue that you want to have in your life. That's a wealth principle. Passive income. Passive income, women sitting at home, you're going to love this. Do no work and you get a check. That's a wealth principle. We all like that. Now, how can you do no work and get a check? Well, that's what happens when you have a team, you have a corporation. If you see a young person that's in the community and they want to do something to try to better themselves, i.e. get a job or go to college, listen, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make $10 every time you bring me a customer, every time you sell a cake, every time you move a, a case of soda. Now, I buy the sodas. I give them to the young teenager. He goes out and does his thing, does his due diligence. He generates revenue. He keeps a percentage. I get a percentage. 
I did absolutely nothing, but I'm going to get paid. And if that's something that he does consistently, I'm going to get paid. So as you're sitting home, I'm going to give you a moment. Get you a pen. Write it down. Residual income, passive income. You want to know those two things. You want to study them. You already know what linear income is. You do it every day and you hate it. So if you're trying to get wealthy and you're not where you want to be, or you're trying to get financially stable and you're not where you want to be, know that that linear income that you have is not going to get it. That does not mean go out and quit your job because I cannot give you one tomorrow. But it is a stepping stone for you to start recognizing that, you know what, I'm going to turn this linear income into residual income. Now, how can we do that? Well, we all work. People work, save some money, buy a home, invest in bonds, invest in an IRA. You have to start beginning to recognize what's an asset and what's a liability. Balance those out. Those are some of the, this is some of the language that I want you to understand. Assets and liabilities. You hear these words all the time. We say we know what they are, but do we really know what an asset is? Here's an asset. It makes money. It appreciates over time. It's a liability. It costs you money. Anything that's a liability is no good. So as you begin to get on your quest for financial stability, you need to be able to identify what are my assets, what are my liabilities. Do I need to go and spend $30,000 for a car when I only make $30,000? Probably not. Because if you buy that car for $30,000 and you drive it over the lot, you come back around the block five minutes later, you won't get $30,000 for that car. So that investment was a poor one. Education, always a valuable tool, always a valuable investment. And that's one of the projects that we're working on here at the Urban Wall Street Project. One of our projects is called the Helping My Community Helps Me. And this project is for teenagers, junior high school students, high school students, college students who may not have college funds. Back in the 60s and 70s, children used to have college funds. Families were able to put away a little bit of money for a college fund. But the sign of the times it makes it very difficult. But we're still spending that money. Once again, remember, $1.2 trillion a year. So how can we maximize that money for ourselves? Well, if you're interested in uh, being a part of the Helping My Community Helps Me um, initiative for teenagers, at the end of the show, there will be contact information. And um, you definitely reach out to us, and we will uh, get you started on the path of developing a college fund for yourself, becoming an independent person so you can have some of those things that you want. Now, I would like to pose a question. Because we talk about financial stability, we've talked about the, the natures of money, and we've given a little uh, background on the history of the Black Wall Street and the inspiration, um, which is now the Urban Wall Street Project. But my question I'd like to ask is, are we, urban America, ready or prepared to begin the process of being an economically self-sustaining infrastructure? Self-sustaining infrastructure. Well, what does that mean? That means... If we need $200,000 to keep a soup kitchen alive or to keep a daycare center alive or to keep a nursing center alive and budget cuts, unfortunately, have those on the table to be scrapped, well, because we've done our due diligence and we have a self-sustaining infrastructure because we're maximizing our money, when one door closes, we're able to open up our own door and take care of that uh, necessity ourselves. That's important. That Many communities do it from here to Africa, to China, to Belgium, people have this type of principle that they practice, so it's very important. You know, as I sit here and, and I think about, you know, the people that will be watching the show and, and, and how many people are paying attention and how many people are in a situation where uh, their economics is just not where they want it to be, um, and that's okay. 90% of the country, 90% of the world is not economically stable the way they want it to be. But the Urban Wall Street Project and your, and your efforts, because the most important is your efforts. I can bring you the message. We can create the program. We have four different initiatives that we've created to create economic infrastructures within the community. Um, but if you're not doing your due diligence and you're apathetic and lethargic, then your success won't be forthcoming. Okay? It's very important that you be the master of your destiny. Anything that you want is predicated on your efforts. If you listen to Oprah Winfrey, Diddy Combs, uh, Bill Gates, or Donald Trump, they all work very hard. They never stop. They have a tax master attitude because that's what it takes. So can financial stability be acquired if you're financial illiterate? Well, let's think about that. 
If you're illiterate in the area of mathematics, can you teach math? Probably not. If you're illiterate in the area of reading, I mean you cannot comprehend, can you become a reading instructor or a literacy coach? Probably not. So, if you do not have financial literacy, can you acquire financial stability? Because in order to be stable in an area, you have to have knowledge of that area or that subject or that content. So if you're not knowledgeable in the area of finance, then the quest for financial stability is moot. It will not happen. But we're going to change all that. Because as a Bronx resident and a product of the Bronx from high school and a graduate of Howard University in D.C., I understand the economics and the socioeconomics of our communities. I understand what's necessary, but I cannot do it alone. It's important to me that you understand for yourselves, for your families, for our communities, for future generations, for hundreds of years from now when we won't be here, that we've put something in place so that we won't become eradicated or become extinct, if you will. It's real, real for urban America right now, really real. We spend $150 on sneakers every three months when they come out. We probably don't spend $50 on a book once a year. That's a sad situation. We all know that education is the key. We hear it every day. Education is the key. And, in, and to open any lock, you need a key. So the lock is, how do I get into this office? How do I get to this employer? You have to be educated. You have to be literate. You have to know where you want to go. So what do you want to do? Do you want to be a giver? Do you want to be a taker? Do you want to be a receiver? Do you want to be a creator? I like to be all those things. I like to create. Then I like to give what I create. Then I like to take that input from the people who are receiving what I've given and create more things. I love the fact that we can have the freedom to think and be who we want to be. I love the fact that we can walk outside, and breathe fresh air, go to the store, read a book. A hundred years ago, that wasn't an option. I love the fact that we can spend a hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, or we can be smart and take that hundred dollars and put it in an IRA. I love the fact that we can spend fifty dollars on a, on a dinner date and a movie, or we can take that fifty dollars and start a college fund. That's important. Think about this. And I show, and I use this example. In 1995, there was a Million Man March, and I want to show. I'm gonna use this example to show the revenue that was generated and what could have happened had something major been taken hold of and ran with it from that point. In 1995, over one million men convened in Washington D.C., and at that same period in time, uh, Minister Farrakhan requested that each urban American household represented hold up a dollar which was done. At the end of that segment, over $2 million was collected. Now just think, if 1 million households represented decided from that point on, we're going to donate a dollar each month to an urban American treasury. Looking forward 10 years later into 19, 2005, there would have been over $120 million in an urban fund for our needs. Take some time, do the math. That's a quarter a week. If a million households donate a quarter a week over a 10-year period, that would have amassed $120 million. How many lives could have been saved or changed? How many doctors could have gone to school? How many new lawyers could have we have had? How many nurses? How many surgeons? How many teachers? How many businessmen? How many schools could we have built? Surely more than the 61 ratio we have with prisons to schools. The Urban Wall Street Project is here for you to teach you about financial literacy, to teach you about the natures of money, to help you understand your credit, to help you understand the detriment to you if you don't understand credit and financial literacy. So how can we do this? Well, for one, you can call the Urban Wall Street Project. But before you do that, maybe go to Barnes & Noble. Even go to your local library. Go online. Look up financial literacy. Look up economics. Look at your community. What's needed in my community? What's necessary? What can I do? 
Each person, each single person has something to give, big or small, large, short, or tall. The goal is to begin to change the way you think. The fact that we spend $84.3 million on depreciable goods annually is a travesty. If you don't know what depreciable goods are, that's things that do not make money. Jewelry, clothing, liquor, all the substances that we gravitate towards that bring no, uh, how should I say, long-term happiness to our existence and surely no long-term financial gain. Financial gain is what's necessary. We're not here to be driven by the mathematics of money or the love of money, but the reality in America is it is a major resource that we need. Unfortunately, individuals don't feel that they can think if they don't have money. They can't produce if they don't have money. But the reality is many of the billionaires from the creators of Harry Potter to the creator of Barney were people that were homeless, down and out, but they had the greatest thing, the idea. I asked some young children in a high school recently. I said, before a multi-million dollar corporation is a multi-million dollar corporation, what is it? No one knew. The simple answer is an idea. It's someone thought. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. No matter how big, no matter how small. Anything you want to do, you can do. But it's very important that you do your due diligence and know the steps necessary. Know the parameters that you're working with. Know what you're capable of. Don't be afraid to fail. Because the only way you'll know how to be better at something is to fail. Nothing beats a failure but a try. And I want to say this. In your efforts to become financially stable, families stick together. Pool your resources. Look at your total household income from everyone if you want to get a home. Well, a lot of times what happens is we all, we're moving, we're separated. One has an apartment here, one has an apartment here. But if we came together and we put those resources together, we could probably buy a mansion that would allow us to have the things that we want instead of us all struggling in five different locations. Financial literacy. There's over 50 million individuals in America that don't have a bank account. It's unacceptable these days. You can get a credit card, debit card, an ATM card, whatever the case may be, prepaid card, but you have to begin the process. It's not an easy process. It's not one that's going to happen overnight. But the Urban Wall Street Project will help you, and you can go online for the same assistance. So what have we learned? We learned that at one point in time, African Americans, Native Americans, Jews, and Europeans worked well here for the purpose of the good of the community. What else have we learned here? We learned that there's three ways you make money in America. You have to know that. Linear income, residual income, passive income. If you don't know those, look them up, start studying them, get residual and passive income in your life. It's necessary, because the reality is, if you stop working today, how much money is gonna to continue to come into your household to take care of your family? For many of us, we're looking and scratching our heads, and the reality is none. So many of us have fallen off and, and fallen upon a hard time because all we had was linear income, and we thought that 401k plan was going to take us there. Well, in the last three years, we've seen what happened with 401k plans. We've seen what happened to some people's dreams when they put it all on the line, and they don't have that residual and passive income. The Urban Wall Street Project is just that. It's an Urban Wall Street Project. It's a project to break down the walls in urban America that are keeping us from achieving our financial goals, our educational goals, and any other goals that we need economically, socioeconomically, or otherwise. My name is Earl Christian III. This is the Urban Wall Street Project. Be on the lookout for many new episodes coming up, talking in financial literacy. And um, keep your head up. Good night. Thank you.